thanks to the way that we've been taught, thanks to the education system, we have been taught that questions are not actually part of the learning process. We've kind of been taught that questions come after the learning process. And I'm, I'm being super emphatic about this and I'm emphasizing this because I need you to hear this. My students are forever telling me, yes, Yvonne, I know that questions are part of the learning process. Why do I do questions? I do questions as part of the learning process. No, you don't. Because if you did, it would not bother you so much that you failed the question. You would not avoid the next question. You would not hide away. You would not feel discouraged. You would not feel demotivated. If you genuinely felt that doing questions was part of the learning process, then you would go, oh, wow, I still have stuff to learn here. I'm going to now adjust my studies, guide my studies, maybe go back to this, try another question, get some help here. Great. Mission accomplished. I have used this question to learn some more about what I need to know, what I need to do. Maybe I do know enough. Maybe I need to shift something. Let's move on to the next stage. Can you see the difference? You would not feel so demotivated if you genuinely believed that questions are part of the learning process, but you don't. Deep down, you feel that questions must come after the learning process to evaluate and prove whether or not you did your learning properly. I need you to shift that in. The learning process comprises of a bunch of different parts. Getting to grips with the information, working with the detail, visualizing how this is used, understanding the type of problem that this particular topic was developed to solve. What is this tool for? Trying your tool out. That's what questions are for. Let's try this tool out. How is this used? What does it look like? Oh my goodness, this is now a different problem and a different situation. How does it work here? I've only used this in one situation. Let's see how it's used in another situation. Oh, look, look at the differences. And so it's the same knowledge used in different ways. And part of your learning process is to use the same knowledge in different ways. And to see and understand and learn the connections, the differences, how it differs, what it, et cetera, et cetera. But that means we've got to shift our understanding of the purpose of questions from after I know everything, to this is part of the process. I need you to go into questions with the objective of I am doing this question to help guide the next step of learning. Not, well, I clearly my learning failed and now I'm going to have to go back to scratch. Well, clearly I failed that and I don't know anything. Why don't I know this? Why can't I get this faster? I used to be able to learn this faster and now it doesn't make sense to me. And so I back off. Procrastination sets in, demotivation, discouragement, avoidance, don't want to ask for help. We hide away. I hide away in theory. Uh, I'm not going to do another question until I feel like now I know what I'm doing. I need you to shift the objective of why you're doing questions. Because the way to, f to stay motivated, the way to decrease that discouragement, to decrease the procrastination, is to make sure that you go into the question with a realistic objective and an objective that's actually aligned to what you need to be doing. So that when you come out of that, you go, my objective was to identify where I need to go next, what I need help with, exposing myself to different situations, understanding better the types of things that I'm going to have to be able to do in the future. And so these things can now help guide the next step of my studying. Have I failed at something? No, because it's not an assessment. It's a learning tool. 